Yo, 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 yo. What up, what up? It's Justin. It is not cut right. You are not watching Making the Cut. If you are here for Making the Cut, we will be back next week. But you should stick around because we're doing an interview today with Emmanuel, a.k.a. The Truth, and producer Mark Mims. And we're talking about their new film, Bad Things Happen in Philadelphia. We're about to go live with both of them right now. What's up, everybody? If you haven't heard of Bad Things Happen in Philadelphia, it is an awesome documentary that covers the gun and gang violence that is happening in Philly. The movie is executive produced by Alan Iverson. There is a CHH heavy soundtrack um, that was made for this film. And Emmanuel, a.k.a. The Truth, kind of orchestrated the whole thing. So we're going to go live with them. Uh, let's see if they're in here. Let's see. If you're just tuning in. Going live with The Truth, a.k.a. Emmanuel and Mark Mims. So let me just invite them to the chat. Uh, all right, here we go. All right, just waiting for them to join. Oh, I see Truth. He's in here. All right, here we go. Going live. Yo, what's good, Jay Blev? Truth, it says you're unable to join. <laughs> All right, let's see. Here we go. We'll try again. We're talking about the, the project Bad Things Happen in Philadelphia. All right, here we go. What up, what up? What's up, what's up? How you doing? Fantastic, man. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm glad we were able to reschedule this. We're just, uh, we got to wait for Mark to get in here. He should be coming soon. Let me see. He's texting me right now. Okay. Um, all right, so are are you for the purposes of this interview, are you the truth or are you Emmanuel? Uh you can just say Emmanuel FKA the truth. You just you're just giving me more stuff to say. I'm Mark, so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> all right. I, Mark says I have to invite him, but I think I did. So let me try again. Yeah. All right, let's see. Kobe and CHH. Yeah, I love it. I'm flattered. There we go. What's up? Hey, there we go. Yeah. What's up, I, th fellas? I think I invited you guys both before you were in here, so maybe it didn't it didn't stick. All right. We're here, bro. All right, we live. We live. We're doing this. We live. We live. Go. I wish you all guys... Rapzilla family. Yeah, I wish Friends. you I wish you guys were bigger and I was smaller because I'm just asking the questions, but <laughs> all right. So everybody tuning in right now, we have Emmanuel, formerly known as The Truth. We have producer Mark Mims, and they just were got together on a project called Bad Things Happen in Philadelphia. It is a documentary that talks about the gun violence in Philly, the gang violence and what Gary Mills of Shoot Basketballs, Not People is doing. And you guys also put together a soundtrack that is heavy with CHH artists and actually former CHH artists uh, on it as well. Uh, so that's super dope. So guys, I just, we, we wanna talk about this movie. We wanna talk about how we can support it. We wanna talk about how this all came together. So I guess the first question would be to Mark. Could you speak on how you got involved in the film and then guide it into how Emmanuel got involved and then he can pick it up from there? Yeah, yeah, I mean, backstories. I mean, I've been working with Truth for uh, 
a long time. <laughs> 10 years maybe? Yeah. 10 plus, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But no, I got the documentary came across me from uh, my desk from um, a good friend of mine, Edith Rodriguez. I was working at a film studio at the time. We were making um, pretty big box office films, right? Um, um, but we kind of noticed early on is that like these stories of, of what's going on in the country and what's going on in Philadelphia specifically, these type of films weren't yeah. getting made and weren't getting financed. And so Kyra Knox, who's the director, who is phenomenal, by the way, like incredible, by the way. She's in here, um, by the way. What's up, Kyra? Is she here? Yeah, tell her. Yeah, she's here. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's up? Yeah, she created a phenomenal sizzle reel and, um, and it came across my desk and I reached out to her. I didn't know her at all, right? I didn't know her from yeah. our stories. We know her from Canada Paint and reached out to her, hey, look, like, I love this project. Like, um, let me, a music guy, get behind you and, and kind of help you kind of bring this to life. And so we started working on this. this I mean, we've been at it for over two years, uh, Justin. And so, um, and her and her team are phenomenal. They tell such a beautiful story of, of some of the harsh conditions in Philadelphia, but they do it in such a meaningful way, right? Like, You've seen documentaries before that are like only showing you the gloom, right? But right. She, I mean, they paint such a beautiful picture of the city of Philadelphia and don't reduce it just to the statistics. And so, um, so we were working on the film. And I talked the truth about it when I first came across the desk. I was like, hey, look, I think I want to make a soundtrack for this. I think I want to kind of make a score for this. Um, we've been talking about kind of diving into this space for a long time. Um, and I, I sent him the sizzle reel, I sent him the information. And uh, the rest was history. We started uh, working right away. So, yeah, what was was the project completely done when it came across your desk, or it was just kind of well, you said it was a sizzle reel, so it was more just like a trailer of what it could be. Like, how long in the process was it? Yeah, so I mean, it was a week's worth of shooting. Um, it was a week's worth done. So I'd say, um, I think Kyra would tell you it's about almost halfway there, right? Like Kyra and her team. I mean, listen, like being in film for the last few years what they were able to pull off just in community by themselves is just phenomenal. And so um, when I came up, they were about 50% completed. Um, yeah. And that's when we stepped in and kind of just started working on the score and the rest of the film and soundtrack. All right, so now Emmanuel, how did it come across your desk? And you know, how did you jump on and become involved? Um, well, first of all, um, as Mark mentioned, he and I have been in partnership for a very, very long time. And, you know, kind of the nature of the relationship is, um, you know, whenever opportunities arise, we're, we're volleying, you know, <laughs> Good boy. yeah, you know what I mean? And, you know, and in a situation like this, you know, and the, the good thing is that the, the talent, the talent is there. So it's not like we're just giving each other stuff to do. And it's no, it's not, <laughs> but, um, I was really excited when he called me about this because I've been in an A and R space probably for the past three years heavily. I just been really quiet about it, and but Mark knew. Mark knew that I've been functioning in that capacity, and shaping albums and providing vision and direction sonically and and, and musically um, to various projects. And so this though was for me the biggest over the past three years, you know, and and um, the most exciting because of the complexity of it. There's a lot of complexity because when you're working on a score, particularly the soundtrack is one thing and the score is another. And the score, right. you have to, the music has to become a character in and of itself. And then the music has to be re reflective and representative of each of the characters that are in the actual film. And yeah. so to, the time that it takes to kind of um, find sounds um, that are complementary to the um, each of the you know key characters and the film was a was a task but it was exciting and it was fun and uh, we landed we got there and for the soundtrack it was really exciting and the soundtrack includes myself um, you know beam who does a lot of work with Beyonce and many others um, Jill Scott Adam Blackstone so it's chock full and uh, to your point some CHH artists and some who are former CHH artists um, you know for for the soundtrack, we just wanted voices and brands really that were consistent with um, the positive message messaging of the film, you know, yeah. because, you know, the film is really, it's, bring, it's heightening people's awareness to gun violence in Philly, which people know that I'm from Philly. Um, but at the same time, it's offering alterna an alternative, shout out to Gary Mills, you know, for <laughs> providing an alternative yeah. space, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And so um, the soundtrack, we just wanted the soundtrack to really 
um, we just that's what we want for the soundtrack to serve as the soundtrack for for this film so that when people if you didn't see the film the soundtrack would get you excited about it so yeah and i think i think um mark we might have spoke about this a little bit too there, there's this national like topic that d1 sort of sparked and this has always been like an actual topic but d1 kind of said it in a way that made people take notice so from both of your experiences, can you talk about maybe the, I guess the role, the messaging of music has to do in within communities, especially, yeah. I guess, typically for this project, we're talking about Philly. Like how does, how does music that might be for the streets and everything impact the people who are actually in these communities? Yeah, I just saw, do you want to do that um, interview? You mind me taking this one, Mark? Yeah, go for it. I just saw you do what do that um pivot interview which was really powerful when he cried yeah. and asked him why he was crying and one of the things that he said was that he was a, a victim you know of we, what he would say was murder music of murder music that yeah. you know he was almost murdered and um i i, I think oftentimes you, people underestimate the power of music you know there's so there's a disconnect you know, and there's no, we don't really make a correlation or draw a line from, from a Meek Mill to a, you know, you know, you're, you're just your average young dude that's kind of growing up, you know, in the inner city um, and how a Meek Mill's, you know, how Meek Mill might shape the way that he sees the world, you know, um, I think we underestimate the power of music. It's, it's interesting because music, I was watching Stranger Things today. But straight, this is not the only place where I yeah, where I've discovered this. <laughs> but music, um, there was a, a there was a scene in the in the um, in the show where she had to listen to music in order to kind of get out of the upside down. Yeah. And one of the points that they made was that music has the ability to transcend um, the you know the uh, what is the frontal cortex which is essentially just that executive space in your brain that processes information you know knowledge you know what i'm saying yeah. um it but it kind of transcends that and it moves into the realm of imagination and which you know once you get into the world of imagination you know how broad that can be and so i think so many of us really just underestimate the power and the influence of of music and so i think what d1 is saying is um is critical and i think he's also saying that it's important that there's congruence because you can have an artist that you know in their music you know on one song represents positivity and on the very next song does the opposite i think that's what he's fighting against that the, that the contradictory nature of a lot of the music that's out there and um i think that's what we want that's what we want to do wanted to do on this soundtrack we just wanted there to be consistency we wanted there to be congruence that's why i said who, the people not even not just what they were not just what they talked about but the artists themselves and their brand was actually important for the soundtrack as well we wanted consistency across the board so yeah because you want people to represent in their life the yes act. yeah I think it's interesting you said that about Stranger Things because obviously you're talking about running up that hill. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of the power of, of music, though, that song is 40 years old and Jeez. it's a bigger hit now than it was back then. And it's yes. because somebody saw that in a scene and it conveyed something powerful. There you go. And, there you go. and, and that's. And just, a I'll add that I think that when you watch this film, right? like really pay attention to the score because i think that what greg cox did on a lot of these scenes it immerses you yes um, into the world of philadelphia it immerses you in the, in a beautiful way right yes um and and no like you said the power of music to manny's point that's why you know um i really trusted manny to kind of like put this together right because he grew up in philadelphia he saw both sides of it in fact in one sure of did. Scenes, grew up in the inner city you, there you go right so in other words it. um Exactly. So it's important to kind of have a person who lived in the city, who lives in Philadelphia, or a Philadelphia native, native, to really kind of help shape what the sound of the soundtrack is. So, so yeah. let, me, let me ask you this. What kind of impact do you think, like a mainstream artist who makes that murder music or bad message music, if they just turned around and actually said, hey, I'm going to just make positive music now and put it back into the community? More, more than the actual action. I know the joke was like, 
more than giving out turkeys, but actually putting putting the music <laughs> out that edifies people too. Like people like like yourself and other Christian artists, you guys always have this good message. So maybe it's not going to hit people who are already expecting that message. Mm. From yeah. But just came out and was like, yo, this is, I'm invested in that community. Like what kind of impact do you think that would have? Yo, let me dive, let me take this one first, Manny. Yeah, please. Um, I, I, okay, this is going to sound like a, a, a hot take. I, I don't have a problem with art reflecting your environment, right? So long as you're making it aware. You know what I mean? Like I, I was watching the, the D1 discourse, right? And yeah. and I think what we're really talking about here is like accountability. You know what I'm saying? Like in other words, like like naming like the negative effects of your music. You know what I mean? So I don't know necessarily that it would have a positive impact in community, right? We don't know that. Like you don't know how it's received. It's a whole different conversation right. for like the music industry as a whole is piping out certain music. So them turning around and kind of just making positive music may not be effective. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, there's so many phenomenal artists who don't identify as Christian artists who are making great music that I can't resonate with, right? But um, but I don't know necessarily. It just it would be an easy flip of the switch if it would impact at all. I mean, that they need to be making music, but being aware of what they're doing. But go ahead, Truth. What were you gonna say? No, I think that's a, I think that's a great point. You know, well, it's just the what what you're pointing out is you know the fact that you know <laughs> it's not always a one to one. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that's just the nature of the beast that's when, when you read through the book of ecclesiastes it's like man the rich and the young i mean the rich and the poor die just the same the righteous and the right. wicked die just the same you know it's kind of like you would think that the righteous had a better deal than the wicked in terms of but they don't you know so so it, it, there's no way to really quantify that however um i do think that um i think over it's, it's interesting that when a person turns over a new leaf oftentimes they be they fade to black. They're no longer as influential as they once were. So yeah. I think that that's always an interesting dynamic. So and that's to Mark's point. You really just never know how things will turn out, just because people loved them for what they were doing. That was on the other right. side. <laughs> and so the moment that they, the moment that they repent, so to speak, <laughs> and go in the opposite direction, people are like, eh, I don't want to hear a positive view. <laughs> It's almost like, you know, there's there's certain like comedians or whatever that, um, you know, they 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 turned over a new leaf because maybe they came to faith or something like that. And I don't like them no more. <laughs> I like, I like Yo, the bad version of them better. Yo, thank you for being honest about that, by the way. I appreciate that. <laughs> but I'm just being honest. So I'm saying that to say that um, I think in some instances it could have a, um, it can have an extremely um, powerful impact. While in other cases, you just never know what the results will be because people may actually turn away from them because they're not doing what they like them for to begin with. So it's interesting. Yeah, people might find it like disingenuous. Like, yeah, oh, they can find it well, yeah. they can find it disingenuous or they could just not like this version of them, the new version of them, you know? <laughs> that I always remember the the conversations after uh Eminem disappeared for four years to get healthy off of drugs. And now he's <laughs> people didn't like that. <laughs> he was oh, when he was on drugs. <laughs> we liked you better on drugs. <laughs> like, like your music was better while on drugs. Oh God. And, like, that's terrible. That's that's, that's the, no, the human nature is complex, bro. It's it complex. To exactly to exactly what you're saying. Um so I feel like I feel like with Christian artists kind of and, and Christians in the space beginning to to saturate mainstream spaces right whether it's sync licensing scoring and curation um even creating films so how how far has everything come since like you guys were on the come up making music Jeez. Like, where do you we're, we're, we're coming a long way and i think you know i'm grateful for people like mark mims and kyra and gary trusting us with this project um and i say us i mean uh, greg cox and i um grateful for you know them having the uh the vision you know and, and the foresight to bring you know people like ourselves alongside of them in this journey because it does help to expand the genre it it, it i mean it has broader implications even beyond you know what it might do for me personally or for greg personally yeah. or even the film and just in terms of the christian hip-hop community i love the fact that we're getting an opportunity to see to kind of expand and grow 
outside of certain boxes, you know. Um, so I, I do think it's I do think it's very positive um, just for the expansion of of the genre, thousand percent. Yeah, uh, I know Derek Miner told me he's like Christian music does so well with sync licensing and placement yeah. and everything. Thousand percent already positive. Yeah, uh, it's uplifting. You can you know people can look at it and know that they're not going to have to censor anything. Yeah, you know it's not going to be offended. You just yeah. the music's ready to go. Three yeah. months. A thousand percent. Super dope thing. Yeah. A thousand percent. Um, all right. So let's talk about AI, Alan Iverson. Uh, how did That's he get guy. <laughs> <laughs> involved in this film? And uh, how much of a stamp of legitimacy did he put by just having his name there? <laughs> um, all right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. Okay. We're going to have some conversations. I think. <laughs> One of the things that I realized in this process is that there are a lot of times, a lot of we'll call celebrities who are unaware of the cultural power they hold. Yeah. Like they're, they're used to being treated as products, right? As just brands, mm -hmm. right? Um, as just, you know, like um, as just talent, right? Um, and so one of the reasons why we approached Alan and his team is because, um, like we know, we realized that he could do a lot more, right? Like it's Allen Iverson, right? And so um, we first started working with him early on. That was kind of the pitch. It was, hey, look, we're doing this film about what's going on in Philadelphia. And we want you to be involved because when you think of Philadelphia, at least for us growing up, right? It was Allen Iverson, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so early on, he lent his name um, and we, we had already had the project at the point, right? Like. Um, we reached out to him and said, hey, look, we really want you to be involved in this. And he did, he, he, he lent his name to kind of get us in certain doors, right? And so we're, <laughs> we're grateful for that, right? Um, but yeah, so Alan's been, um, Alan's also been navigating it as well, understanding his cultural power that he holds. Because like you said before, and if we're talking about artists as well, right? We're talking about influencers, right? Like literally just him adding his name or saying something positive, it means so much to so many people. Um, so Alan's been a good partner in, in that way. Yeah, I, I mean, I could imagine because you have a movie about Philly having one of the greatest athletes ever from Philly. Yeah. And <laughs> so that's automatically going to draw people from Philly to watch that. And even, you know, though it's a documentary about Gary who does stuff with basketball, it's like, oh, yeah. people, people never heard of that. So why should they care outside of Philly? But then you see Allen Iverson and you're like, oh, it's an NBA legend. Right. I'm gonna check this out. Yeah. Wait, wait. I mean it, it kind of like um disarms people in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like especially when you're talking about a heavy topic like, you know what I mean, like gun violence in their city, right? Um, then yeah, it disarms people. So that that's that's helpful in that way, hundred mm -hmm. percent. It makes it very it makes it commercial for sure. Yeah. Is there a thought or possibility of trying to have him like in the film in some way? Yeah. Um I'll let you all watch it, but like, I'll, I'll say this much. Um, Alan is now the vice president of Reebok, right? And so we are producing a film and making a film at the same time while he's navigating some things. So, um, but yeah, that was always a thought to kind of have him a part of that. But what he did do is he like, he lent his talent. We have a voiceover from him in the trailer. You hear him in the trailer as well. I'm not sure if you heard yeah. it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's we, Alan gave us what he gave us. And so like, we're, we're excited to kind of like move forward from that. Okay, dope. Now, what what can you say about, I guess, the soundtrack in terms of like the sequencing and how you wanted to lay everything out and, and kind of tell the story of the, the project? Yeah. So, I mean, if you're talking about the film itself, I mean, you're asking how are we kind of breaking well, down? Okay. Well, I'm, t I'm talking about the actual um, soundtrack, like the, oh. uh, the, 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 the soundtrack. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your question. <laughs> Just telling the story. Yeah, just just wanted wanted you know wanted songs that help to tell the story, because the, you know the the music just it serves the serves the um the film. Yeah, you know, and so true. can I say something real quick while you're no, saying please. that? No, please. One thing I I love most is that, um, in this soundtrack, what you'll hear is also some young artists from Philadelphia who are actually in the film, right? right. Like mm -hmm. Dave King, Young Dave. Um, yes. And listen, you're going to meet some phenomenal people in this film, first and foremost. You're going to meet Dave, Winter, Khalil, right? Gary Mills, right? 
Um, but Gary Mills uses basketball as a vehicle to change and save lives, right? But what I love most about Dave's story here is that Dave is using music, right? I mean, like when you're thinking about what's going on in the city of Philadelphia, and you're talking about in 2021, 500 murders, and that's oftentimes underreported, right? Yeah. You're talking about these kids who are living in this environment, but also what influences their music, right? So we were talking earlier about murder music, right? It's this really complex situation because these kids are reflecting their reality, you know, in a yeah. way that most of us, even listen, us in the, the CHH world can't even fathom, right? Like there's yeah. a certain level of safety that we have, right? In some spaces where we can't talk. That's why I'm always, I'm really slow to judge like the Meeks and others, right? Because unless you've had that lived experience, we can't really say too much. But, um, but anyways, I didn't mean to cut you off truth, but yeah, you'll meet some kids like Dave King in the film, who's phenomenal as well. And, um, and Truth did a phenomenal job kind of just telling the story. But go ahead, I, I cut you off, man, my bad. No, no, it's all good. No, no. <laughs> you said that was a question for him and you took it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, I, but I want to add to that, you know, there, uh, there are some f unfamiliar faces on this record um, Joey Allende, I mean, just, there's so many, like, really East. super, super talented. Uh, we know Canon, we know, you know, we, we kind of been around for a minute, but then there's some artists that we're not so familiar with on this project. And I just want to say the fact that they made this, there's a reason why they made the project. <laughs> yeah. the, um, and again, what made it make sense, uh, for us was the fact that they, they, use their music to tell the same story that is scripted for the film you know what i mean yeah so yeah and how much how much direction did you give on the tracks for the artists that are that are on there like did you build the beat and then just say this is what we want to be about we yeah we, yeah we pretty much crafted this project in the same way that we do all you know a lot of my records when greg and i work together we kind of start from scratch Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, uh, some of the artists, you know, they, they had music already. So we had a feel for, you know, what the energy should be like. Yeah. Um, but ultimately we had to customize the project based on the tone and the tenor of the film itself. You know yeah. what I mean? That's what we wanted to capture. We wanted to make sure that it was cohesiveness across the board between film, um, film music, film soundtrack and score. And so, yeah, we kind of crafted all of the music on that basis you know with okay. all that in mind all right mark here's your here's your chance to to flex <laughs> you guys oh, you guys have won a couple of awards you guys yeah. have done super well at premieres and and different places that have shown the film so tell tell the audience about the feedback the response so far and then you know are there more premieres are there more you know what's coming yeah yeah so we've been i mean we've been um We've been uh, in the film festival circuit since May of this year. We started off at ABFF, American Black Film Festival, which is, if you don't know, it's it's the largest black film festival in the country, right? And I can honestly say Miami can be the world. And um, we were a selection there early on, right? And from there, we were part of the Harlem Hip Hop Festival. We won Best Documentary. We won the um, Show Festival. We've been able to be featured in The Hollywood Reporter, all these big deadline as well. Nice. And so we um we had our premiere in um in Philly. Uh, not too long, a few weeks back. And it's been great. The feedback has been meaningful. I, again, when you watch this film, um, like you all see statistics, right? You see these numbers, right? You see the, the, yeah. the murder numbers in Philadelphia. Um, but this film just really humanizes these, like, these stories in a way that's just, um, that's just incredible. And the feedback's been great. And Gary, again, like there was support that even Gary Mills, the shoe basketball is not people. So join sbmp.org if you want to take a look at it. I'll put it in the chat. And um, they, I mean, he's starting to get financial support to kind of help save these kids. I mean, because he's literally using basketball as the vehicle to change and save lives. Like, and that's not even like a, a catchphrase, right? Like, you know, it sounds cool, right? But like literally what he's doing is he's using basketball as an entry point for so many other things. He's, he's bringing these kids in who oftentimes live um, in our immersion trauma, and he's really offering trauma-informed care, right, through some colleagues and some um, therapists who do a great work, like Gabe Torres, who you'll, well, he was also credited in the film as well, but also interested in emotional intelligence. He's interested in agriculture, but it all starts on the basketball court, right? And so we're able to get him some support, um, 
And it's the response has been phenomenal. And we're also really, really excited about our partners over at Fox Soul, who I will tell you are incredible, are incredible, who really rally behind us and uh, help us get the story out there. And so, yeah, we, gotta, we have a few things that we're working on right now that we'll, of course, let Rapzilla know as well as we, um, as we kind of go down the line. But uh, yeah, it's been a great response. It's been a, it's been a really good experience. It's been really good. Hey, real quick, I just want to say people are asking where to watch it. Fox Soul is streaming a couple times a week. Is that accurate? Yes, Fox Soul. You yeah. can go to foxsoul.tv. You can go to Instagram's at Fox Soul, um, and you can find the screening times. It will actually air again this weekend, um, a few times this weekend as well. But also, as of today, you can go on Fox Soul and watch it on demand as well. You can go to the website. Um, and so, yes, you can also follow the at Bad Things Philly Film which will also um, give you the screenings. And you can also follow the phenomenal director, Kyra Knox. That's K-Y-R-A-K-O-X underscore. <laughs> and you can kind of find out all the information about where to watch it there, too. Doesn't right. Mark look like a movie guy? <laughs> Listen, it's been, a, it's been a long two years, man. Like, <laughs> he, look, he looks like a movie guy now. No, he... <laughs> I, you know, it's, a, it's a long project. So, oh. so, so you're good. Yeah, yes. you, listen. You fit the bill. Hey, listen. I, I feel like I earned my scars a bit, right? So, <laughs> but yeah, it's been a good journey. It's been good. Is is uh is the project? I mean, um, is the film gonna be like live premiering in any any other places? Screenings. So we are actually working on a couple of actual screenings that are happening. We're gonna do a screening here uh, in Virginia, my hometown here. Um, we'll do that in January. But on top of that, um. We are working on some other screens, on, in the, especially in the Philadelphia area as well. Um, yeah. And we're also open to kind of taking this on the, on the road as well and having panel discussions. That's something we're really interested in doing as well. Because I think this film, when you're, you're watching it, um, it sparks a lot of conversations, right? Yeah. And what I think you'll love most in that is what Kyra does and, and Kevin, who is a phenomenal editor, is that they're not leading you in one particular direction. This is not a political film. This is literally just talking about what's going on in Philadelphia and right. And it sparks conversations and we're ready to take that conversation out on the road as well. So, yeah. Hey, somebody just said nobody from Philadelphia is on the soundtrack. Wow. Sir, I How happen do you feel? to be from Philadelphia, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Born and raised on the playgrounds where I spent most of my days, okay? <laughs> you were B-ball outside of the school? <laughs> yes, outside of the school, you know? Um, the disrespect, man. That's just... <laughs> disrespect, bro. It's disrespectful, bro. <laughs> He's not even got the, the thumb over the screen where, where you're, you know, where you at in the corner. Um, so how, <laughs> uh, can people support uh, the film or the foundation uh, with yes. Mills and anything outside of, like, just watching it? How can people support Yes, it? absolutely. Uh, okay, being full, like, fully transparent. What you have in these organizations is lack of resources, right? And so if you want to support, join SBMP.org, right? And you can learn all about the, um, the organization, Mothers in Charge as well, right? And yes, absolutely. And also like um, share it, share the film. If, if you love it, if it really like touches you, like share the film, share the teasers. They can absolutely support in a whole bunch of ways. And you can find on those Instagram pages I gave you. Dope, dope. Yeah, before uh, before we got the Philly disrespect, um, I actually thought <laughs> I would say like if you're a parent, uh, watching this movie is super impactful to you. I have two young kids. Obviously, they're they're not out and about yet. You know, they're not even playing outside by themselves. But you yeah. know, as a parent, when you see other parents going through heartbreak or losing a child or some sort of tragedy. I, I always joke to my friends, I was like, yo, since I became a dad, like everything makes me cry or everything gets to me. So yeah. is this this movie is going to like touch you in that way. You're gonna get the feels just as a parent. And I think it is important too, as a parent to see what other parents are going through. So you know, hey, I can't let my child go down that path or be in those types of situations. Yeah, that hey, Justin, that's a great way of wording it. I love what you said there. Once you became a parent, like it's like this sensitivity kicks in a, a thousand times over. Yeah, yeah, a, a, a flip, uh, the switch flips, right? Um, and that's what I'm saying. I think you'll find that in watching this film is that it, it sparks a level of awareness um, for for experiences that go beyond our own. You know what I mean? Um, so no, that's that's the takeaway. Hope from everyone else is able to watch it and um, have that same um, 
experience. All right, so one thing, I know you guys are, are focused on this project right now, but do you guys have sort of a vision beyond this now too, where it's like, we were able to do bad things happen in Philadelphia now, what's, what's the next thing we can do? What's the next topic we can cover? And are you going to tell me about it? Because Truth, I saw you like nodding, like I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's, this is, again, Justin, this is two and a half, three years, right? Yeah. And so, um, I think what's happening now is we're going to rest for a little bit, right? But there, Good. but there are some things that, um, that the collective are working on. I, I don't mind sharing this now. Kyra Knox, our director, she actually is a Sundance fellow. Um, okay. so she was, yes. And so she's developing her first feature as well. But, um, in regards to storytelling, right? Um, like, you know, we have a few stories that we're looking at as well um, that we can't share right now. But of course, you know, when we're ready, our, our director said we need to sleep. <laughs> We've been working. I mean, we're, hey, listen, you hear how brutal the film industry is. We're talking 12, 14 hour days for two years. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So like, um, so we're going to rest for a little bit. But yeah, we have some things we're working on. Yo, anytime I can get rest, I'm taking it. Um, <laughs> what about what about you, Emmanuel? Are you in the same boat? Oh, just personally? Yeah. Oh, oh no, I have a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you, have, you have a little bit yeah, to go through. I don't know about, I don't know about him, uh, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm actually... Um, well, you know, I, I, my work was a year. <laughs> Theirs was three. <laughs> uh, so, uh, right now, I'm in it. So, like I said, I've been heavily, heavy on, on the A&R side. Yeah. And it's it's uh, it's growing. It's becoming a lot more comprehensive. I started off just doing hip hop projects, and uh, went from a few a couple hip hop projects to um, the bad things happened in Philadelphia, and now I'm working on a gospel artist by, who goes by the name of Joshua Rogers, who's a Sunday's Best uh, winner, and um, I'm in the process of ANR his process his project just started that a couple weeks ago. So that's my world right now. I'm pretty much in golfed in Joshua Rogers land. So wait a second. Are you forgetting the fact that like, oh, we're gonna talk about it. So uh, and I'm Grammy nominated. To... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and I'm getting ready for the Grammys. The Grammys, coming <laughs> the, Grammy, the Grammys is in February. And I'm um, getting ready for that. Um, gearing up for that super excited about that, man. You know, I haven't had a nomination since I think 2009. Um, so this is a really, really special one for me. So I'm working on, I'm getting my, my suit tailored this week. Let's go. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ready. <laughs> and um, also, I'm um, did some work with uh, Candace Cameron. I don't know if you know her, Candace Cameron Burr. She was, um, oh yeah, he, he, on The he, View. He, yeah, yeah. He, so did some work with her um, that, and that, that comes out in February as well. So got a couple things coming down the pike that I'm excited about, bro. Yeah, so I think last time we spoke, you told me that that Grammy story, like that Grammy experience you had. Was that experience from 2009 or was that? No, I went to the Grammys last year. I just went though. I just here. went like, hey guys. You know, <laughs> I know it looked like I had, was nominated because I was on a red carpet and everything last year. But, <laughs> hey, but um, yeah, no, this last year I was just in attendance and this year I'm going as a nominee. So okay, really that, cool. That's to God one. be the glory. Right. To God be the glory, brother. Yeah. So for for everybody watching, go look on YouTube, the interview I did with Emmanuel. Uh, he talks about a really dope Grammy story. See, we, we get to plug, we get to go back. Uh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> he talked about uh, people being surprised that they knew who he was and actually being respected like as a man of- In the mainstream space, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was wild. So it's a dope. It was, I get annoyed when we talk about this, Justin. Yes, I mean, yeah, I, I was gonna say, you should have said this in front of Mark. Oh, Justin, listen. <laughs> Like I, we're talking, so we're talking. So, you know what I want to do one day? I want to have this family, this 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 family tree of like influences that Emmanuel has had across genres, right? So it's so bizarre because Manny doesn't tell you guys half the stuff he's actually working on ever. Like I watch these interviews, yeah. right? That's true. He doesn't yeah. say like he shares pieces of that. When one day, listen, I'm gonna hijack the interview and I'll air it all out. But <laughs> my point is, this annoyance I have of him always being surprised, right? It's like, <laughs> It's been a long going thing, man. He's yes. super respected. I mean, there are so many people that call his phone asking for advice musically. It's mm. just nuts. And 
Listen, he doesn't like talking about himself, so I'm gonna I hype don't, him up. I, that, just, I just stay quiet, bro. I just wait, just stay so quiet. It, I stay out the way. <laughs> have that advice, I might have to hit you up for a few things if you're just giving it out like that. <laughs> I, I might, well, there, there is a fee. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. Fine. <laughs> you can cash at me. No, I'm joking, bro. Anytime, brother. Anytime. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, so, <laughs> what what else? Any anything else to add? Anything else you think mm -hmm. that we? talk about no I, I, I think i think we've covered everything right yeah we're good yeah absolutely we're good we're we appreciate good. you man yeah man congratulations to you guys congratulations to kyra the project is great mark one more time plug it where can everyone watch it stream it yes you can watch bad things happen in philadelphia on fox soul and you can watch it on all your smart devices it's available now to stream on demand um please please tap in watch the movie also, take a look at Shoot Basketball's Not People. Join sbnp.org to learn more about the organizations who are doing some phenomenal work in Philadelphia as well. All right, yeah, you did that so much better than I would have, so that's <laughs> back to you. Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much. Much this love. Go peace. And, oh, win that, appreciate that you guys. Grammy, bro. Win that Grammy. I got to win it, bro. Let's I go. Need all vo if you're a voting member, make sure you vote for your boy. That's all right, you heard it. All right. All right. Peace. Peace. Really. See you guys later. Peace. Take Peace. Care. All right, everyone, if you missed. All right, everyone, if you if you missed any of this interview, it's going to be right back on the Instagram page. Uh, I'm just going to upload it. It'll be on YouTube, too. Uh, so remember, bad things happen in Philadelphia. That was Emmanuel, formerly known as The Truth, and Mark Mims. Bad things happen in Philadelphia. I'm Justin Sarachik, and I will see y'all later. Peace.